Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's episode is a very special one because it marks the first episode of the truck camper slash overlanding rig build series. So this series is going to span many episodes. It's going to cover everything that I'm going to be doing to my truck. And this episode specifically, I'm going to be covering a lot of information to kind of set the pace for the series. And I'm also going to be showing you my current setup and a new piece of gear that is already on the truck. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I have to clear the air of is no, the channel is not going to turn into a truck only camping channel. It is still going to be true to its roots, many different forms of camping. This is just going to be another extension of that to bring in a different crowd of people because not everybody can hike. Some people have physical disabilities, they can't get to locations or they don't live in areas that have those locations. And traveling in a vehicle or a truck is just much more easy to access those areas and it's more practical for some people. So I'm still gonna be doing my regular stuff, hot tenting, hammock camping, tarp camping, the truck is just another piece of the puzzle for the channel. So I wanna cover a few important things that I'm going to be basically taking into my mind while I'm building this. And what is the purpose for this? So my truck needs to still be an everyday truck. I do not want a build that screams overland and uh, basically be a, a lifted grocery getter or a pavement princess. I do take my truck off road, but I also don't need a monster truck to do that, okay? So I don't need to go modifying my truck just to go to the Walmart parking lot to flex on a curb and take some Instagram photos. That's not what I want. I want a truck that is very, very functional, but still doesn't look like, hey, let's go over to that truck and let's go start ripping things off while the guy's not there. I want it to be kind of a modest stealth build with a little bit of attitude. Okay, so now that we've got that out of the way and you guys have a general idea of where this is going, it's going to get very fun because I have a lot of things already on my mind. Some things are already ordered and some things are already here right now. Now the truck is just behind the camera. We're gonna move there in a second. But first I wanna show you guys my current setup, what I'm using right now for truck camping. Okay guys, here is the current setup that I'm using for my truck camping. You guys have already seen this in many photos on my Instagram and I do have a couple videos already on the channel featuring this setup in the back of my truck. Now this is from Camprite, so a huge shout out to Camprite because they really came through in basically supplying the cot. So this was a really, really big piece to the puzzle that really lit my fire to get back into truck camping because I've been doing this for many years and I've kind of moved away from it. And after having the cot on the truck, it relit that fire and I am excited to get going again. So thank you very much to Camprite for supplying this. This cot does come with a rain fly. Currently it is soaking wet. The rain fly is actually in my truck dry and the tent is completely soaked. So we're gonna talk about a few pros and cons that I've experienced with this setup and then talk about the cot a little bit and then we're gonna move over to the truck and explain why I moved away from this. If you are gonna go with a tent cot setup, although it is perfect for the weekend warrior that wants to get out on a Saturday or a Sunday, you get home from work and you don't have a lot of time to plan, you can throw this in the back of your truck. It packs down very small, it only weighs about 50 pounds and you can store it inside of your house, in your garage, you could slide it in the truck bed. Only takes one person to transport, one person to set up. And this is the double wide cot, I should mention that. So it does fit two people very comfortably. But the con with this is if it rains, you have to set it up to dry it out. Now I've had this outside for three days now and every single day has been rain, rain, rain. So today being the final day, I'm actually going to pack it up, fold it, bring it inside of my house and set it up in my living room so it could dry out properly. Okay, so with this tent cot, you'll notice that there are multiple doors all the way around it. There are four points of entry, and each point of entry has both a solid panel and a mesh panel to block bugs. So the front door is currently open all the way, both the mesh and the solid panel. The door on the far end, you can see that the mesh panel is shut, but the solid panel is open. And then over here, I've got the, both the solid panel and the bug mesh completely shut. So this offers a 360 degree view with bug net if you want the bug net open, or just a 360 degree view with all the panels open and access so you can slide in any way you need to. This fits excellent on the truck. Like I said, it's, it's fairly lightweight, 50 pounds. I mean, if you went to a rooftop tent, 
they're in the two to 300 pound range. You need two, three people to get it up on top of the truck, take it down. This requires no extra hardware, no modifications to your truck, no drilling holes, nothing. All you need is the tent cot and a two by six is what I use in the back of my truck. I put down two two by sixes and this sits right on top of it. And then the end legs actually stay folded up and this portion sits on the rail of the truck as seen in my other videos. It works extremely well. So I am still going to be using this on the channel, not on the truck, but I am going to be using it just as you see right here on the ground. And that'll offer me to put my family inside of the truck camper. And then me and my son can come out and sleep in the cot next to the truck. That way we all have somewhere to sleep. Or I'll even be using it by myself on solo trips if it's too hot to be in the truck and it's nice and cool to be in the cot. That's going to be the best of both worlds. So let's move over to the truck to see what I've added. Okay guys, so let me properly introduce the truck and give you a little bit of information on it. This is a 2012 Dodge Ram 1500 5.7 liter V8 4x4 truck. That is a mouthful. Now, right off the bat, you can clearly see the newest addition being the truck cap. And people are probably going to say, why is it black? We're going to talk about that in future episodes because my intentions when I got it were actually to spray it silver so it matches, but going along with some of the pieces that I have in mind of putting on the truck, this might actually look good. What are your thoughts on that? Just drop it down in the comments section, let me know because I'm undecided about what I'm going to do with it. So let's do a quick walk around with the truck just to familiarize you guys with it. And then we're gonna talk specifically about the truck cap. All right, so coming over to the front end of the truck, you'll notice that it is the sport package. It does have the painted match front and rear bumper. There aren't really any chrome accents on the truck other than the rims and the stepping board on the side of the truck. Currently, it does have a leveling kit, so the front is lifted up, it is leveled, and it is sitting on the 20-inch factory chrome rims with 20-inch BF Goodrich KO2 tires that are 33 inches tall. So overall, the truck is basically stock, other than, like I mentioned, the leveling kit, the tires, the truck bed is a spray-in bed liner, so there is no plastic liner back there, so that was the first thing that I had to get rid of and do a spray-in bed liner. Like I said, other than that, the truck is basically stock. All right, guys, let's talk about the truck cap now, because obviously it is not the same color. Like I mentioned, we're gonna talk about that in a future episode, but. Let's talk about truck caps in general. So when looking for a truck cap, this one is not new. It is secondhand used. And uh, basically when shopping for a truck cap, it's not that easy. One, it's got to fit your truck. Two, it's got to fit your needs. And three, it's got to be in good shape. So new truck caps such as this one can range from $3,000 to about $2,500. This one was actually covered by a sponsor of the channel. Who wishes to not be mentioned so I thought that was pretty admirable of them to want to help out and sponsor the channel and not be mentioned so thank you very much you know who you are I really appreciate it that's the story with the cap so let's talk about a few things with the cap and shopping for them because like I said it's got to be in good shape and it's got to fit my needs so my current needs were I needed two side windows that open up with bug netting which I have it is tinted it is a low rise cap, so it doesn't stick up past the roof line. So the whole truck is nice and streamlined. And it just, it works really well. The back door has two T-handle locks. We're gonna talk about why that's important for me to have two instead of one centrally located. We're gonna cover that in a future episode because it's actually a really smart idea. Next is finding a cap that fits your truck. Now, if you're searching for a used cap to fit your truck, there are many things that need to come into consideration and you could be searching for months on end for the perfect cap. One, you've got to look for the right color. Now, obviously we've established this is not the right color. If I was holding out for the perfect cap in the color, I would still be looking. I got really lucky. I only searched for two days for this cap. And the reason I found it is because I actually stopped searching for truck caps and I started searching for trucks. Trucks that were for sale, that had a truck cap, and I targeted the cap, and the individual was willing to let the cap go without the truck, which was a bonus. So another really important thing to keep in mind when looking for a cap is it has to be a good fit on your truck, that being the body style. So this was sitting on a quad cab 2012 Dodge Ram, the exact same truck as mine, so I knew it was gonna fit perfectly. 
that is really the difficult part because you might run into a truck bed that's only a five foot seven, a six foot, a six four, or an eight foot. You've got to find the cap that actually fits your truck and this fits pretty snug. Okay, so let's take a look at the inside of the cap. It is bare bones right now. It is literally a blank canvas just waiting to be decorated. So this is going to be a lot of fun. I'm very excited about this. I have built many truck campers in the past and those trucks have come and gone. This is going to be a ton of fun. I've learned a lot from building truck campers of what I need, what I want, what works, what doesn't work, what's practical, what's not practical. So I'm going to be putting a lot of that experience into here, but I thought it was going to be really, really special to bring you guys along on the build process in this series to have your guys' suggestions to also go with my ideas. So that might actually change a lot of my ideas, having your guys' suggestions, and it's just going to be fun. So talking about the cap outside, like I said, it does have two T-handles that lock, one there, one on the other side, not a centrally located one that was very important. I am going to cover that in a future episode. We'll save that for later. It does have the actuators, so they work really well. Goes up, stays up. You can also angle these wherever you want and then tie on a string, which is probably some of the reason why I wanted two T handles. Kind of let secrets out of the bag right now. Uh, but that does work for that as well. So we'll just push that all the way up. And you guys can see that there is a ton of room in there. Once you really start looking at truck caps and how much room's inside, I'm only 5'7 tall. This truck bed is 6'4, so that gives me a lot of room if I want to build a camper sleeping this way. I could also lay this way. Mind you, my head and feet will basically be at end to end bumping into the, the truck bed. So there are two options. I'm undecided, but I have a really good idea that I'm going to lean towards building it this way have a bed on one side and then a kitchen area on the other side and go from there but that'll come later on in the series there is going to be a refrigerator inside of here there will be power there will be lighting there will be all the amenities and luxuries to enjoy being in the back country but it's also going to be modular so it can all be removed and be a regular truck if needed okay guys coming inside of the truck bed i want to point out a few things one Spray and bed liner, no plastic liner, which means there are drain plugs in the bottom of the truck bed there. Some of them are up here all over the place, so those are going to need to be plugged with rubber plugs. Uh, that'll be taken care of, but I also want to point out these 2 by 6s So these are currently what holds the tent cot from Camp Right when I was using it. These aren't fixed in any way. They just lay right here, and uh, when I leave camp, I basically just put them down on the truck bed itself, and I leave them in the back of my truck. So I've got one here that I'm sitting on. I've got one here. This will show you a, a pretty good mock-up of where my bed platform, how high it will be. So I've got two and a half inches above my head easily to sit comfortably. My head is not touching the top, which is awesome. So we do have 360 degree windows. Now the one downfall with this cap is there is no window up front. Now that may be a possible upgrade later on putting in a different window with a slider because I do have a sliding window in the back of my truck itself. I don't really need to reach in the truck. I could just get out and go in there, but it would be a little bit nice to have a window here. But I do have the two side windows which have locks and they open up very large offering a ton of ventilation on both sides. So that was a must for me. Have to have the sliding windows. And uh, just to demonstrate how I could lay this way, if I, uh, maybe I'll put my head down this way. So if I lay down in here, it is an incredibly, incredibly tight fit, okay? I don't know if I'm gonna like that. The pro and the con of doing that is one, it would leave that whole end of the truck for quick access to basically reach in, give a porch way, so you can come in, maybe have a bench, sit down, take the shoes off, and then basically from this board all the way back would be the bed. That is one benefit, but I don't think it's going to work for comfort, just I don't like how boxed in it is, so I'm probably going to build lengthwise and then do the, the table area and stuff on the other side of the truck, but just want to show you guys a little bit of a size reference. That's what that looks like. That's what everything looks like right now. So this is literally a blank canvas. Okay, so that was a lot of information in this video, being the first video of the series. 
I wanted to cover as much as possible. And I hope I teased you guys enough that you guys are actually starting to think about what the possibilities might be with this because there are going to be a load of accessories and things that are going to be changed outside of the truck and a ton of things that are going to be changed inside of the truck. But keep in mind, this truck is still going to be a stealth camper truck with a little bit of attitude. So it's not going to be in your face overland truck, but it's also not going to be just a boring stock truck. It's going to be a lot of fun. The first thing that I'm actually going to be changing, which is happening tomorrow, is the exhaust because this being a V8 5.7 liter, it really doesn't sound like it. So I'm gonna give you guys a sound test in just a second so you guys can hear it on startup, hear a couple revs of the pedal, get an idea for it, and then first thing tomorrow morning, that exhaust is going out the door because it has a boat muffler on it. It is just gigantic, it's like a 30 inch muffler on this truck, so that has got to go. So that'll be the first thing, exhaust is gonna go on there, that'll help with a little bit of the attitude. Not really camping related, just something that I want. And then we're gonna get into prepping the cap in the next episode as well, and get that ready to start building the camper. <laughs> Okay, so that was a cold startup. Nothing was warmed up, just to give you guys a little bit of an idea of the sound. It does not sound like a V8 off-road truck. It just sounds like a regular truck. So that needs to be changed. We're gonna give this thing a little bit of attitude along the way and have a little bit of fun with it. So, like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know down in the comments section what you guys think of this build series and some of your suggestions for future episodes because like I said, tomorrow the exhaust is going to be the first thing changed. I will show that in the next episode what I went with what it sounds like and then we're also going to start prepping the truck cap for the camper build so drop your comments down in the comment section and i'll catch you guys in the next video